about citizen soldiers anymore, but I think that's what we hope most of our soldiers and uh, sailors and Air Force people will be, with citizens and soldiers. And that's a big part of what I'd like to address today, is that we have to honor not only the folks who are in the armed forces, but all those folks that back them up, and particularly their families. This monument was completed and dedicated in 1925 as a memorial to those who served in World War I. What does its name, Peace Triumphant, really mean? Does it suggest that peace is only the absence of war, <coughs> or is peace also the presence of harmony, the harmony of outer cooperation or inner love? Three years ago, an Oak Park couple, Bill and Ginny Casson, began working with others in the harmony of outer cooperation to keep the commemoration of veterans at this memorial from dying out. Bill's and Ginny's own profound encounters with love and war made their efforts more than empty ritual. In the 40s, they both had found each other and love's ultimate inner peace. Bill had to part from Ginny to serve with the U.S. Army in World War II. He was there when the Americans invaded Hitler's empire at Normandy and freed the Nazis' brutalized captives in prison of the war and concentration camps in Austria. This couple, like so many others in wartime, found the ultimate inner peace in the midst of the ultimate absence of outer peace. It is a pattern known to many who have served their country and to those who have loved those who served. Hemingway, remembered with over 2,000 others on this monument, wrote about it. One of his novels, A Farewell to Arms, led people around the world to experience as he had war's bittersweet mixture of violence and love. Thousands like the Cassins have helped Oak Park achieve excellence through harmonious cooperation and inner peace. Villages across three centuries continued from the pioneer beginnings of Joseph and Betty Kellestrings right here on the ridge we stand on today. Here they planted civilization. Citizens of the hamlet they began worked together in peace over the decades, building their community into an internationally renowned village. But during these decades, when wars came, Oak Parkers had to leave the peacetime enjoyments of their families and building communal life to serve their country. They sidelined their civilian careers and pastimes to obey orders without question, giving up some, if not all, their lives, liberties, and pursuits of happiness so the rest of us might continue to enjoy them. Nearly 100 years later, World War I broke out. Like other American wars, it interrupted the individual and communal lives of Oak Park, as many of whom are named here, Oak Park is and people, villagers from River Forest. But World War II effectively ended at 11 a.m. Armistice Day, November 11, 1919. The word armistice comes from the Latin arma, meaning weapons, and sistera, meaning to cause or stand or stop, cause to stand or stop. Now, really, I'd like you to be looking, if you would, at the sculpture, beautiful sculpture behind us, because it really says it all. Notice how the four figures of the monument so beautifully express the sense of armistice. The figure rising above the others, Columbia, sheathes her sword. The three in front of her stand serenely at ease. They illustrate peace as the absence of war, but even more, a deeper meaning of peace as all four reveal the presence of a spiritual tranquility within themselves and with each other. In 1954, Armistice Day, as you heard Ginny say, was legally broadened from commemorating the end of World War I to Veterans Day to commemorate all who ever served America's armed forces in war of peace. This monument as well has come to stand for veterans of our villages for all times. Despite their period uniforms, the three men's faces and postures suggest veterans of all ages. And one of the things we don't think about much is that not only is there physical suffering in war, but emotional, 
intellectual, spiritual suffering. As couples who are parted, as Jenny and Bill were, and many others have experienced here, as are experiencing now, it is that terrible loss, that, that separation, and that concern that we know is part of the experience of serving our country, either in the armed forces directly or as members of families. As we leave today, let us remember the sacrifices of body, mind, and spirit required of veterans honored here. They have often experienced more intensely than most of us the meaning of life's darkest nights and brightest days. May we carry away within us something to share with fellow villagers across the ages, the outer composure and the inner calm of peace triumphant.